Well, firefighters this morning are still trying to completely extinguish fire at the GRA headquarters and next building 24 hours after the outbreak. As at 8 a.m. this morning, the firemen were still trying to put out the fire after discovering some smoke in the facility. The crime scene remains a security zone with police still on the ground and the facility still cordoned off. Even though the GRA has directed all staff to work from its Kimbo office, some workers still turned up at the Circle office but could not access the building. Police officers detailed to the scene were seen diverting traffic and helping people navigate the area. Kamla Adum was there this morning and he filed this report. Uh, the ruins are very obvious. You can see the destruction to the property that has been occasioned as a result of yesterday's fire. So when we came here a short time ago, we could see some smoke still billowing from the, the final floor, which is the last floor of a building. And I could see some fire officials inside the building still trying their best to sort of um, douse any latent fires that still may exist in that particular building as a result of the smoke that we saw coming off from the final floor of the building. And I can report, uh, Roland and Mama V, that the fire service officials are still stationed here. A short time ago, we saw that they had uh, taken some buckets of water right to the last floor of a building from where the smoke was coming from a short time ago. And yesterday, we knew that the traffic flow on the stretch was affected because of the incident and so the police had to block a section of a road in front of a revenue authority building but that has changed today because the police mttd officials are here in their numbers they are controlling the traffic and uh, allowing vehicles to move and also allowing motorists to use that particular stretch without causing any gridlock on the stretch now roland i, I tell you what when we got here, we saw some of the workers of the Ghana Revenue Authority who had showed up to work this morning and had been told that they do not have access to the facility because of the fire that destroyed the property. So you could see them standing in fates, having little conversations, and they are all speaking about what has happened to their offices. Some of them I spoke to a short time ago told me they did not have a clue about what had happened here. And so they just showed up at work this morning only to be told by the uh, fire officials and the police officials that are here that they do not have access to their building. And so ordinarily, behind this building, there is a car park where the revenue authority workers would go and park their vehicles before they get into the offices for work. Now that car park or that parking lot has been cording off and so there's no movement into that particular area of the building and so you could see them standing in fits having conversations they've been told to go to the larger taxpayer office around adabraka to transact business because that is where m some of the workers here who some other workers who are also from the head office who had their offices here would have to relocate from here and go to the larger taxpayer office at adabraka near the adabraka police station where they are going to be able to continue their work and transact business but it doesn't appear to have sat down well with them they are still standing by uh, they tell me they are expecting to hear an official word from the officials of the Revenue Authority so they know the next line of action for them. But for the, the ruins of a property proper, as you can see, there are heavy cracks that uh, have developed in the building. And so this particular building, as we see, heavy cracks, deep cracks, I have to tell you, visible cracks on the building, as we can see at the moment, is just adding to the devastation to the multi-purpose building complex here which was destroyed or raised by fire sunday and we are told by some of the workers that a lot of documents a lot of papers a lot of archiving materials have been lost to the fire and if you can see closely some of those documents the remnants of those documents are still visible in your shot at the moment and so that is the situation here, uh, the accident scene. You can still see police officials still pacing up and down, just trying to sort of control the movement of people. And you can see also the fire service officials still getting buckets of water, trying to reach the last floor of a building from where we saw some smoke billowing from. And so it doesn't appear the fire has been totally, totally controlled because once the fire officials are still finding water and getting the water to the last floor of a building, it's, it suggests that there is still some latent fire 
that could be in you know one of the offices or some of the building uh, departments or compartments of this multi-purpose story structure and so that is the current situation here some of the key challenges that the firemen identified as saddling their efforts to effectively fight the fire is a lack of equipment to fight the fire from the top of the building. According to one of the officers, government has ordered the finance minister to give them money to procure the equipment. That, however, to some is long overdue. What it means is that the service is likely to encounter similar challenges should any other high-rise public facility or private facility be in flames today. Why are we still here? Well, the former chairman of the Ghana National Fire Service, Alaji Amadou Surogo, joins us on the phone from the United Kingdom with some thoughts. Good morning, Alaji. Good morning, Enima. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. We understand that you procured some equipment for this same purpose during your tenure. Why do we still have this problem if we have the equipment that we need? Well, I don't know. Uh, because I'm not there, I will not be able to precisely know the extent of the equipment. But you also would agree with me that when you procure equipment with time changing, you definitely have to upgrade your equipment. You need new ones. And it is not all the equipment that we proposed we needed uh, that we were able to procure. I don't know whether the I can confidently say that during my tenure, uh, we were able to add more equipment to the, uh, the fire service. Uh, I met only about 40 uh, serviceable tenders. By the time we were leaving, we had up over 220. Of course, we also procured four uh, hydraulic platforms. Uh, this was as a result. If you recollect, uh, the fire that engulfed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs building yeah. uh, in the center of Accra, where the fire officers were there, but because of lack of equipment, they could only watch the fire and pray to, to the Almighty God to open the skies and then uh, maybe uh, let rain fall. So as a result of that, the uh, then president, uh, uh, late uh, Professor Mills, you know, initiated the process when we uh, persisted that we needed those equipment. And Fortunately, uh, followed by uh, His Excellency John Ravan Mama, we had to, and we procured some from America. That is the TS, all the fire tenders that you are seeing, the TS engines, then we had the Tesla engines uh, from India, and then we had the Volvo from Belgium, including the four hydraulic, uh, which could go uh, up to about the fourth floor, you know, if it is well marked. We also requested that it was necessary that uh, we had a meeting with the high-rise building owners. We started it, there was a committee, so that we could procure a helicopter, government would come in, and then those buildings could also assist for us to procure a spring plan. So I, I don't know what extent the fire, you know, when, I don't know whether those of course, I know that we sent one of the hydraulic uh, tenders to Kumasi, because Kumasi we had some few uh, high-rise uh, buildings. And then, but I know we, we stationed one at the Makola, and then there was one also at the head office. That is a long time ago. I don't know. I left there a long time ago. So I don't know how, whether they were able to use those equipment or not. I... Of course, I had a lot of concern from some of the fire officers that ever since that I left the place, uh, nothing has been added to their fleet of equipment. The next thing has to do with servicing. If you recollect, when those equipment came, we decided that there was a need to do a rehearsal to do some drill, trial. So we used the Bank of Ghana building and then the CD house where they did a lot of drills with those uh, hydraulic tenders, and uh, people were very happy that at least if there was any outbreak of fire, you know, at, at that level, we, we would be able to contain uh, those fires. So, uh, I, I, mean, I don't know precisely, I know for sure that nothing has been added to the place. I know for sure that after I left, I don't know what happened to the committee, I don't know the high-rises uh, uh, members, the owners, the property owners, 
who we had engaged to try as much as possible and make sure that at least we get one or two uh, helicopters. We had requested government. Government had also put in some processes. But, uh, you know, governance is a continuation. So since we are I'm not there, I don't know what has happened to that uh, process again. But it's so unfortunate that at this uh, time, a fire. I'm told that the GRA building is only about a small block of my front. Can you help me? Yes, it's, it's not very big. So it's about four four floors, I think. Yes, yeah. yes. You see, if it's four floors, the, the, the tenders that we have would be able. But because of the intensity of the fire, hmm. it will not be able to go near to the building so that it, it can uh, draw up the ladder. To that extent, it has to stand up. And by ascending far, you are far from the building. So whatever you do, it will be difficult to get to the top. So the best, the best way of fighting uh, those types of fires is to have a sprinkler, helicopter, you know, a sprinkler where it will just over up there and put and descend the water down. The next thing is also we also advise. And a lot of the fires were through electrical force and what have you. Mm. So during during my time, we insisted that those cables that were being imported, inferior ones and what have you, should all be banned. And then I remember very well that we, we started promoting the local industries, the cable metals, the railroads, and then the tropicals, where quality cables were being manufactured to be used. And there was also the need for constant inspection, going around and making sure that you inspect and everything is working. Because, I mean, prevention is always better than cure, as somebody, I mean, as we all know. And so it's so sad that uh, at this hour, you know, because the GRA office, you know, contains so many important documents. Yes, I don't indeed. Know. Uh, we have been told that there was cash at another point. I no, we, we, it, that, that has been cleared up. We've been told that the, nothing has been lost. No cash, no checks, no um, documents that are not backed up. So we've been told that everything is okay. Yeah, it cannot be okay because definitely, I mean, uh, there will be a lot of cost involved in getting back the building. To the the infrastructure, so it cannot be yes. Okay. yes. It can never, never be okay. I mean, it's... It, well, they will manage and try and make sure that the backup mm. can help. But yeah. I think that we had wished that this thing had not happened at all. Yes. I will appeal to the government. Let us pay more attention. You know, for a very long time, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying only the NTP government. For a very long time, fire service has been abandoned. Until seriously, when 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 I took over, uh, I I wasn't happy at all, and we had council members. We had a government, a president who was also ready to help. And so we were able to augment it from just 40 to 239. But you see, you need to maintain it constant because now it's also aging. And you yes. need to replace it and bring Indeed. it more than one, you want. So it is high time that we started, you know, doing something serious. Let us continue with this meeting with the high rises. Now, whether you like it or not, there are a lot of high rising buildings that are springing up in, in, in the capital and around around the country. So definitely fire you can't the best way is to prevent it. But once in a while uh, it may happen. And when it happens, how do you fight it? So the government must come in. Uh, it's unfortunate that ever since uh, I left there, uh, nothing much has been done mm. to add to the stock of equipment that uh, and to also improve upon them bringing more than one to one I think, I think we should, we should all be concerned about that. Yes, thank you very much um, for joining us, Mr. Amadou Surogo. And meanwhile, the acting GRA Commissioner General, Amisha Dai Owusu Amwa, has been outlining where taxpayers can transact business, including the Adabraka Taxpayer Unit. There's no money lost. All the funds are secured. No bent cash. There's no bent cash. This particular building houses the large tax payer office as well as the medium tax payer office for Adabraka. There are roughly about over 200, 280 people in the building. As GRA, we have our own contingency uh, disaster recovery plan in place. And so currently what we have in place is that the staff for the large tax payer office 
could be relocating to our office at the head office building and particularly to the place that we refer to as Kimbo office. It's another uh, annex for the large taxpayer. And so all taxpayers who require to transact or do any business with us are encouraged that they can do all their transactions from our head office near the stadium at the Kimbo office. We have made provision to ensure that our staff who are currently located in this building are available there to attend to them. For those taxpayers who are part of the medium taxpayer for Adabraka, we have made arrangements for them to be served at the Adabraka Small Taxpayer Office. The Adabraka Small Taxpayer Office is located near the Adabraka Police Station, and therefore the staff who are responsible will be there to serve them. As far as our data is concerned, we are confident that as GRA we have our own system where the main uh, server sits somewhere and then the backup sits somewhere. So data will be not be lost.